Hello, my name is Mie Kango. I'm a faculty member of ceramics department at School of the Art Institute of Chicago. I'm originally from Japan, born and raised in the outskirt of Tokyo. Today, I would like to talk about my relationship to ceramics industry or ceramics industrial processes. Until I went to graduate school in 2006, I was working as a production potter in Evanston, Illinois. My husband, Charles Young, had been running a production pottery business for more than a decade, and I joined him. We used jigger machine, ram press machine, and electric wheel to produce porcelain tablewares. We fired everything in our gas kiln to cone 10. We used to call our business blue chatter pottery. We wanted to offer tablewares that are useful, affordable, and beautiful. Many people wanted sets of dishes that are all identical and stackable. Jigger machine and ram press machine were efficient tools to achieve that desired result. I often jiggered all day, and the next day, I trimmed each piece on the electric wheel all day. Then. I slipped with brush, and Charlie chattered one by one. We spent all day glazing and fired the kiln. I enjoyed every aspect of the process, and I learned enormously about clay and how to handle clay. To make a same piece repeatedly means that my body moves the same way repeatedly. It's all about muscle memory, and I had to become a human machine in a humble way. Although I thought I was doing the same things over and over, I often found difficult to produce the wares with consistent quality and with as little loss as possible. Quality control requires immense care and attention to details. I think that our work, Blue Chatter Pottery, was located somewhere between large-scale industry and individual studio potter. We used industrial processes to mass-produce wares, yet a great deal of handwork was involved in the process. We used to sell our work at street art fairs, and we used to receive unpleasant comments from the competitors. Their claim was that our work was machine-made and we should have not been allowed to show at art fair. They often forget that electric wheel is a machine. In my opinion, the work should be judged by what it is, not by how it was made. So it's Yanagi, a Japanese philosopher, and a founder of the Minge, or folk craft movement in Japan in the late 1920s and 30s, discovered the beauty in ordinary utilitarian objects that are made by unknown craftsmen. The objects that Soas admired had to be handmade by anonymous people in quantity, unselfconsciously, affordable to the masses, and most importantly, useful in daily life. So its son, Sori Yanagi, born in 1915, who grew up in a house across the street from Minge Museum in Tokyo, which his father established, together with Shoji Hamada and Kanjiro Kawaii, became the most prominent and thoughtful Japanese industrial product designer. Most of Sori's designs represent simplicity and natural beauty. His products demonstrate his thinking. True beauty is not made. It is born naturally. He also considers that every object we use in daily life as a tool, and the tool has to be useful and beautiful in order for us to live well.
In his essay, he talks about blue jeans, baseballs, and ice pickles as excellent examples of anonymous design. He admires those items because they were born out of necessity and usefulness, and that is a concept that both Soets and Sori passionately share throughout their lives. The experience of being born into and surrounded by his father's collected objects and ideals formed Sori's standard of beauty. From this experience, he seamlessly brought together industry. And the handmade, retaining true beauty while obtaining the capability of mass production. This is how he spent his lifetime trying to bring beauty to ordinary people's lives.